Hey, hello everybody. This is March 31st. I'm going to be reviewing some information for you. Um, keep you updated as well. Remember, be checking Google Classroom every day. I'm posting uh, announcements here. Yesterday I posted that I was on Google Hangouts. I uh, remember if you need help, um, go to Google Hangouts. It's up here in your um, applications. Uh, just scroll down, probably down here to Google Hangouts. You should see this. And then you'd be able to contact me with any information. I've been saying that I've been available for help. For help, And I've been uh, having myself available if you need to type in any questions. Uh, I'm going to set up a video call uh, like I did last week, probably for tomorrow. Uh, so you and your classmates can see one another. And I can give you any information that you need for the rest of this week. So a few updates and announcements. Once again, Google Classroom, make sure you're checking daily. I'm either posting videos, if you have questions, uh, you let me know. Um, but also, uh, School Loop Mail works best. I did update the gradebook. I submitted grades for quarter number three, so these will be quarter number four. I've been updating here. These are your first two assignments for quarter four. This first one was the CK12 questions. So I think some of you have gotten onto the CK12 website. If you still have not, you need to do that. The class codes are here, so period four. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. Um, and then open a new tab up here and enter your information. Sign in with Google and enter the class code period four. Period two, that's your class code. That's an LF1TK. And then period one, that's your class code. And then period three, your class code is here. Period five for math class. Period six, your class code is there. Uh, you probably don't need this one right now, but all classes yet. I'm posting on this website on CK12 uh, per each individual class. So it tells me how many uh, members there are in the class. So not everybody has signed up yet. Uh, and then you should be able to click on assignments. So just click on assignments and it will give you a list of the different assignments you need to do. Just submit them right on uh, the website just like you would. So you click on one of the quest, uh, assignments here, like here's the meiosis review questions. So you just click on that and yours will look a little bit different because you have a student version, but it should give you an assignment. So you would just click on this and it would uh, have you be able to start that. So if you click on the review questions here, there should be a tab over here to the right. It'll tell you when it was due. Uh, and if you didn't do it yet, it's fine. You can still do it. Um, just click over here to the Meiosis Review Questions. And it's going to pull up um, questions for you to answer. You would just click on each uh, answer, go through each one. And then at the end, you would submit it, just like you would in Google Forms or anything else. So I'll click on Preview so you can see. And you can use your notes during this to answer the questions. Um, but you would just go through each one. So how many pairs of chromosomes do human body cells have? So you would click on the answer that you think it is, um, which would be 46. And then it would tell you if you're right or wrong. And then you'd go on to the next question and so on. Some of them are click and drag. So you'd pull it down uh, to the proper area where it would go. And then you would check it and move on. Okay. Uh, so I already mentioned Google Classroom and staying up to date here. I reviewed Google Hangouts with you. Uh, remember, you can uh, do a new conversation up here. If you want to just ask me a question, uh, you would just type uh, my name in. Uh, yours won't show up. Yours will show up. Mine does not because I'm logged in with my own name here. Uh, but you'd be able to do that. So I do want to review the questions from the book that I assigned to you, which were these questions here. So let me zoom in so you can see them better. So you should have done these questions. Some of you emailed me or shared your document with me. So I'll go over number 1A so you can check your answers at this time. If you're still not done, you can do them now and type them in and turn them in to me. So number 1A, according to Sutton's observations, how does the number of chromosomes in a grasshopper's body cells compare to the number in its sex cells? So if you need to go back up in the book, you may. Remember, your book's going to kind of lag a little bit when you're scrolling up and down. Uh, just be patient. So it shows here uh, that it has 24 chromosomes for the body cells. 
and 12 for the sex cells. So that's exactly half. As it shows there, it says exactly half. Uh, it would be the same thing for humans as well. Half, but a different number of chromosomes. So let me scroll back down to the next question. So that was 1A. So number 1A is it's a half. It's going to be uh, 24 for the body cells and thir sorry, 12 for the sex cells. Uh, number 1B, this one here, for describing, describe what happens when the number of chromosomes, when two grasshopper cells join in fertilization. So there would be half from each of the parents. So there would be 12 from mother, 12 from the father, and they would join together to make um, 24 pairs of chromosomes. So that would be your answer for number 1B. Number 1C, how do Sutton's observations about chromosome numbers support the chromosome theory of inheritance? That's going to be because they get half from each parent. They get uh, half from mother, half from father, and they get those genes uh, half from each parent. So that's how it supports those observations. Uh, so number 2A, what is meiosis? You can just use the definition if you want to that's listed up above. But basically, it's the production of um, cells. So it's going to be, and I'll show you the picture up here, so you can remind yourself. And also, I showed that video last week as well, uh, going over the meiosis process. So remember, it's going to distribute uh, to two different cells. So during meiosis, the chromosome pairs separate and are distributed to two different cells. Um, so they're going to have half the number of chromosomes. So they're going to have half from the male, half from female. Uh, when they separate. So when they join with a new one, uh, they'll have the full pairs. Next question is to letter B, briefly describe meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So remember, I showed you that video. If you still need that video, uh, let me know. Or, or you can just go to YouTube and you should be able to type in um, for YouTube it's going to be uh, meiosis, M-E-I-O-S-I-S, -S, and the people that do it are called the Amoeba Sisters. So YouTube Meiosis Amoeba Sisters, if you didn't see that video last week, uh, just click on that and this should be it right here. So it's a really good video if you want to play it. Uh, go through the information and pause it when you Sorry, need to. Sorry, I have to. a team. Okay, so let's go back to the questions. So it says to briefly describe them. So it's going to talk about the different phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Uh, just describe the different phases um, and what they do. It talks about the growth. Uh, it talks about how the chromosomes line up in the middle. Uh, go through those events. Uh, next one for sequencing. Use the events of meiosis to explain why a sex cell normally does not receive both chromosomes from a pair. Remember, it's not going to receive both chromosomes from a pair because it's going to split and divide in the meiosis stages. It's going to just split in the last phase of telophase. It's going to split and divide. So it's going to get half from mother, half from father. Remember, it's not going to self-pollinate or uh, fertilize on its own uh, and create an exact copy like uh, many plants will do. Uh, it's going to... Um, it's going to split and have half from mother, half from father. Uh, 3A and 3B, uh, both of them can be found up in this page here. So 3A is asking how are the genes arranged on a chromosome? So they're going to be lined up in pairs. Uh, kind of like when you see with meiosis how they line up. They're going to be lined up in pairs, one from mother, one from father. And they're going to be lined up in this way in most cases. That's how it's going to appear. And the order of the genes in one number member of a chromosome pair compared to the order of the genes of the other chromosome. So like I said, it's similar to the last answer. They're going to pretty much line up. Uh, we're going to talk in the next section about what might happen if they are not in uh, complete pairs. Or if one is missing or a different one is substituted in. Uh, different things that, that can happen like disorders uh, can occur. See? So if you have questions, let me know. I'll review a few things real quick. Make sure you're signing into Google Classroom daily to check. I've been posting the assignments and also emailing uh, different assignments. And when they're due, if you need help, let me know. If you didn't turn one in, it was late. Uh, let me know. I have YouTube clips that I've been posting. Um, and remember also to get into the CK12 
website. I'm going to probably put your next test uh, on this website, uh, which will probably be next week. So make sure you're signed in and becoming a member uh, of that information. Go through your book and review it. I'll be on Google Hangouts today and throughout the week. Uh, if you need help, just uh, let me know and I'll be there to assist you. Okay, thank you.